Hey guys, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Whether y'all are watching this in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening, I'm glad you're all here. Today, we have got a screamer of a video, right? The most illegal, dangerous, judged, misunderstood knives in my collection. And I like to focus on the misunderstood because the legality as you guys know, is going to vary from state to state. But this is a great place to talk about KnifeRights.org and Knife Rights, a uh, little app that they've got for Android and for Apple. They'll help you find your knife laws at a tap. I'll put that in the link in the description. First off, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you to all the channel members. I appreciate each and every one of you. And thank you for anybody coming in here to check out my knife, my EDC content. It means a lot to me. I'm glad you're here, and if you haven't had a chance and are so inclined, if you'd hit that subscribe button and the bell notification icon, it would really help me out. So the first knife that I picked up a long time ago, I'm talking well before I got into collecting um, knives again. My first kind of, I take that back. I have gifted on a Boker um, Kalishnikov, which was an automatic that I had, and I had a little out the front that was kind of a junky knife that I don't know where it is. But this little guy has stayed in my collection. This is the Kershaw, I want to say the Launch 4. Um, maybe Launch 9. Let's see if it says. It's a little USA made um, auto in 154cm. This had a horrible edge put on it by me. Um, when I was learning to sharpen, uh, believe it or not, it's slicey, even though it's thick, and it's very pokey. So this little knife is a California legal, probably there are few states that this is not legal in, but automatic knives, they used to be called switchblades, and they were made popular by movies and Hollywood glamification like uh, The Runaways and The Wanderers, crap like that, where you had people using automatic knives and knife fights. Um, in all truths, I look at them as a very misunderstood knife because even with this small knife, if I were to take it to the office, open it up, and somebody saw me open it up to cut some cord, it, for some reason, because of that stigma that came from you know, back in the old days when, you know, it was, it was cool to have an automatic knife and let Hollywood demonize it. But, for example, this bug out, to me, is almost just as fast. So, just the fact that it's got a spring that's assisting it or opening the knife from a close to an open position makes it for a very functional one-handed knife that I think is misunderstood because people hear that snap or that click and they think of it as being something that's big, bad, and scary. Um, I don't look at it that way. I look at it as a convenience feature, but this little guy is made to go to some of the states like California where there's a certain blade length and this little guy's small enough to where I don't think it'd have any problems there, but I'm sure there's some places, some states, and I know some countries where this little automatic knife would be considered illegal. So moving on, and I'm just going to kind of walk these through how they came in my collection. So after getting my little Kershaw that I'd had for, at this point, probably 10 years, I wanted to get, because I've had the Protec Malibu, um, I want to say I might even have had my Mordax. And I forget if it was Jared Neves. Somebody had kind of given me, if you want to try an automatic, Javon, try a little Protec Newport. It's small. It's gentlemanly. It's not very expensive in the Protec scheme of things. USA made. Super snappy. 154CM blade. Really pokey stabby blade like splinter digger stabby and a just great low profile the spring's not a lot to wrestle with 
So it's a simple push the button, it deploys, take one hand, push the button, and it locks up, right? So again, make your cut, do what you need to do with your tool, and then put it back in your pocket. Seems easy enough, but again, if I take this to the office and somebody were to see me take this out to cut my apple, they're going to think, oh, that's a mighty pokey knife. That's a, again, it's all interpretation and it's all based on a lot of myths that were started in Hollywood. Well, some of the places that are telling us we, you know, anyway, I'm not going to go off on a rant. But anyway, the size of the ProTech Newport is fantastic for EDC, and I think I lied about the blade steel. It's actually S35VN. I don't know where I saw, thought this was CPM 154. I know we're getting to one, but this is S35VN. You've got a nice satin flat stone washed um, blade grind, and I mean, just an absolute splinter digger so guys number uh two we'll count up going number two on the illegal misunderstood crazy threatening dangerous knives we've got the protec newport so moving on we came to one that i think there's a lot of gray area in this knife and what makes it a uh, gravity knife versus a locking knife versus a um you know, just a knife knife. And, and I don't know the answer to that. What I do know is that it's a super cool knife. And I've been told it's a gravity knife, which makes it not legal because it's simply not, not legal to carry, I should say, because it doesn't have any mechanism to open the knife. It's just simply fueled by gravity. So you could be walking, drop it like that. And I guess that's somehow threatening, even though this one locks. So I don't know what the actual, uh, what would we say, the, um, the verdict would be on this knife if, if it was cast to be uh, d determined by, you know, the court system, if this would be considered an illegal knife or not. I know from the conversation I had with a local officer here in my town that I just happened to be walking by when I had this knife one day, um, that it is, in fact, they wouldn't see anything wrong with this knife. Um, again, I'm a law-abiding citizen, so it's just going to be in my pocket like this when they check it. Um, you know, I check the, check the laws in your, in your own state, and I will be sure to list not only knife rights where you can sign up for a free membership or a free newsletter, or you can sign up for a membership. They need all the support that they can get. We usually do Knives Live. We didn't do it last year. Get you a subscription over there to Knife Rights so you can find out when they're fighting for laws in your area and you can be aware of, you know, where they need the help. But this is the Riot XOM very unique knife. I bought it because I found it just fascinating. I had a buddy who had the full-size XO and then the XOM, and it's just a joy of engineering to me. It's just a fantastic way that they've designed this tool, and I think it works great. So coming in for me at number three in the most dangerous, misunderstood legal knives would be the Riot XOM, which brings us to number four. And this is my only spring-assisted, i.e. automatic, out the front knife. And this is from my good friend, um, Team John and Team Jamie at EMP EDC Pocket Designs, Everyman Pocket Carry. Um, and this is the Pulse OTF. Guys, I have never been a fan of OTFs until I saw the design of this little knife, the fact that it's got a really usable utility blade for somebody like me who's not looking for just a dagger blade. Um, I, have, I have loved this knife. Um, I love the size of it. I love the speed at which it deploys. I love the fact that it's tactical, that it's still got some point. I love the fact that you've got this beautiful swedge. You've got this beautiful deep hollow ground blade. Um, snappy, snappy action, and talk about a knife that if you take it out in the break room to cut your fruit, 
it's going to turn heads, right? Again, a lot of that goes back to misinformation. A lot of it goes back to a glorification by the entertainment industry to make these knives seem big, bad, and scary. Guys, this knife to me is scarier to be on the user end or the, than this one. I mean, again, it's, it's just all subjective because you tell me that came out any slower than that. I don't know. I mean, again, I think a lot of it's perception, but there we are. Number four out of our eight, and they're just the way that they came into my collection. Misunderstood, illegal, dangerous knives. The EMP EDC Pulse OTF. And the next one doesn't really fit into any category. But I know that this would probably create problems in some of the states. This is the Civivi Typhus, which is a little fixed blade that actually sheaths as a push dagger and then can be converted into a straight utility knife. I wouldn't call it a fixed blade because it's not really fixed because it moves, um, but it gives you both a push dagger, jabby jabby type of tool, and if you were to need it to cut some fruit in the break room, an, an, interesting, an interesting knife. Um, again, this one, the legality remains kind of vague, I guess you'd say, and it would be a state-to-state -state thing, but I can tell you this is a great little defensive carry. The way that this sheath, even though this is the Civivi version, it's not his knife, I like to have a nicer sheath that housed it the same way because it's such a small footprint, the way that it actually goes in your pocket, doesn't take up any space. And then for me, somebody who's using it nine times out of ten to cut stuff, I haven't had to use it as a push dagger yet. But just a really neat knife. I'm sure it would be found by some states to be illegal, to be dangerous, definitely be misunderstood. That's the Civivi Typhus. And then we come to another little no-frills, small, automatic, Protex Strider PT-207. This is the little guy that was early on in my Strider addiction. This is the first outside of the Aph and Grow EF-225 that I picked up um, that was my first Strider collaborative knife. The Protec PT-22 or PT-207. It is a little guy. Um, give you a good idea. I'm carrying a little guy today. The Bird Blades Mini Sweeney. And you can tell that it's just a click bigger than the Mini Sweeney, which is a small, little, dainty gentleman's knife. But this is an absolute self-defense hound. It is a tactical, I think, excellence in the design. I love it because it's got one-hand operation. It's a lot harder to one hand because the spring is much chunkier, but it's still very easy to take it out, make your cut, put it back in your pocket, with one hand and move on with your day. So that brings us to number one, two, three, four, five, six. That was number six. Brings us to number seven. We're one away, guys. This is the Protec SNG Strider. So this is the knife that I was lucky enough to trade with a brother from another mother when I realized how small my PT-207 was, because I didn't at the time know anything about how Striders were sold by sizing, how they were sized, and how the Protex sized them, right? I didn't know that the PT-207 was a Strider size that you could get in a frame lock from Strider. I didn't know that the SNG, which I've since acquired, in a frame lock was available. But guys, this is just the bigger version, CPM-154, Tactical excellence, the big brother to the PT-207 and MagnaCut, um, and just an absolute banger. And I can guarantee you, if I open this in the break room to cut my apple or to cut my grapes, um, I'm going to turn a lot of heads, and understandably so. It looks like an aggressive blade, right? It looks like something that's misunderstood, um, that could be dangerous but it's really just a very usable utilitarian tool that happens to also look badass. 
which brings us to the final one of the day. And the reason I don't even think this would be a problem is I handed it to a buddy of mine who has the original Whiskers, and he knew that this is a Protec Whiskers V2, but he couldn't get it to open. It's got a little different magic opening system, magic being the designer. Um, you simply slide, I don't know if you can see here, this little bit of jimping that you can see on these scales here, which just give me a tactile feel of where my hand needs to be. And then you just, with the butt of your hand, give it the slightest little push forward and it locks out. Now this is a bigger knife. It has a much stouter spring. It is fully automatic with a total hidden locking, hidden deployment method. Um, and I'm sure, sure, without a doubt, that people would find fault with this knife. Um, it's big, it's bad, it's just a knife. It's literally just a knife. But the fact that you wouldn't understand how to open it, how to close it, people take that as a threat, unfortunately. So that's why education is so important, guys. That's why we gotta educate people in the community, people in our own neighborhoods. Don't be afraid if it's within your legal rights to carry your knife. And if you get those odd looks from people, explain to them what it is. It's a great teaching moment, right? Not that you should all be out there spreading the word of knifedom, but if you know it's legal to own and to carry it, carry it proudly. If people ask you, let them know. It's a great conversation point to maybe even find another knife guy. But yeah, guys, these, as I was going through my collection, I've definitely got bigger, badder, knives um but i wanted to find some that i would think would fit that bill thank you joe isabella let me move my b up from brother joe tell you what we'll do put it right over here and it'll turn into that one and then we got our little launch so these are all the kind of squirrely sketchy illegal dangerous scary don't go there with that knife you're gonna cut yourself kind of knives that I wanted to bring to y'all's attention for a little bit of entertainment this afternoon, this morning, or this evening, depending on when you're watching this. But guys, I appreciate y'all. I hope if you're watching this on Friday when it releases that y'all stop by Friday Night Flicks tonight at 8.15 Central. Just check the channel under the live streams. I'd love to see you guys there. Thank you, thank you, thank you again for watching, and please, Look out for the guy or gal to your left. Please look out for that guy or gal to your right. Please look out for each other. Go forward with love in your heart. And please, choose debate, not hate. I love y'all. Peace.